Oh, welcome to Couple of Reviews where we talk about romance, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna just combine this recording with another episode because there wasn't really any romance in this. Decades ago, that's vague. Oh, but like sees like, Dolores, and, and when I look into your beautiful eyes, I see an actor always acting, pretending to be something she's not. Yeah, he's actually, it's actually a mad scientist that implants his brain into that body. He could have just said I don't feel the same way. He left a note. He had a few things to do. He'll be back soon. Yeah, he was gonna drop by the gas station, pick up a coffee, maybe consider the morning newspaper. Grab his dry cleaning run to the store while I visit it, kill Icicle, and then maybe see a movie. Was not sure which one yet. What are you planning here? I'm going to kill Jordan McKent. <laughs> Her kills Icicle by herself. Go to college. So Jordan McKent just gets a pass? Hell no. no, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're on the second to last episode in the series. At this point, I think it's just too late for Rick to even boy again. We only want to help Cindy. We're a team now, aren't we? And that's what teammates do. You're a team. And perhaps more. Wait! You madman! Fight it down first! Think it through! Or I know what I'm doing. Can't. Don't embarrass me in front of her. Thunderbolt, I wish you would take me, Mike, and Cindy to the labs that has what we're looking for. Oh, no. When you say what we're looking for, there's a million things that that could mean. Cameron? He was just about to text Courtney, probably. Courtney still hasn't called or texted me back. Oh, that's rough. We have to prove your intentions are good. What if his intentions aren't good, then what do we do then? What if I brought him in myself? Well, you, we know you're not gonna do that to your own partner. Would that be enough? Anything to get you to stop looking at me like that, Dad? We decided we're not gonna let you go it alone. But it's not your choice to make. You need our help. I don't want your help! You put a bunch of kids in harm's way just to make yourself feel important. Yeah, it was Courtney's idea to do that. The reason they respect you is because they weren't there to see what an ineffectual loser Stripesy really was. I don't think he means that. I think he's just saying that so he'll stay out of it. You heard us? All of it. He's been there for me every time I've ever needed him. Pat Dugan is my hero. Uh -huh. I was so disappointed when I found out you weren't my father. But I thank God every day that Pat is. Oh, so she is a Christian after all. Right. As a favorite, huh? -uh. You know it belongs to me. You're not worthy of it. Again, I don't think he means this stuff. I think he's just saying that so they won't come after him. Didn't come back? Why? Because I'm not a star man. It wasn't a gender thing, it was a seniority thing. We're by one of my dad's labs. Shakim, I think you did it. Let's go, idiots! Is that going to become a term of endearment for her concubines? See, he's lost his mind. Well, maybe that's what he wants you to think. This guy gets it. You lied to him to protect him. The only person who could get that. So he's lying to protect me. I got an idea. Call me when you find Rick. Found him. Probably needs them to lock him in the storage closet and keep the hourglass away from him for a few days. And then whenever they invite guests over, they're gonna have to tell them, never mind the screaming, it's just our friend getting over his addiction. Someone's been working in here. But I thought you said your dad was dead. He's supposed to be. Well, there's another mad scientist on the loose that you know of. It could be him that's working there. A man came prepared with the witch burning equipment. I love it. I love it. What the hell are you doing here? Burning witches, of course. Everything I said back there. Hey, I know, all right? It was pretty obvious. Don't touch anything. You might catch what she has. Uh... 
Just saying. Mm -hmm. well, somebody who's not even trying to be the number one concubine. Oh. My daughter. Oh. Dad? The Dragon King put his lizard brain in the white ape. Where's the ultra humanite's brain? No way. You, you're not telling me that the ultra humanite's brain has been in Starman this entire time, are you? What? What now? I'll take care of him. What? What? Holy crap! Wait, Sylvester has been the Ultra Humor Knight this entire time? Wait, I'm trying to back this up and and the, figure out how it makes sense with things. There was the fact that he kept chasing after the red herrings, but he's been too nice a guy, but I guess that's part of the act. But it does explain the anger issues and how he was lashing out and then realize, I guess realizing that he'd gone too far in acting crazy and that's why he was back paddling on it. I mean, this is a better explanation for him coming back to life than absorbing the star juice and that activates when someone uh, when else is picked to be the guardian. But wait, if he's been the ultra humanite this entire time, how did he know how to use the staff better than Courtney? Where's Sylvester? Oh, well, Dr. McKnight was right about the cosmic energy preserving the body, but Sylvester's brain? Mm. That's long gone. Oh, uh, that, uh, that, that's acceptable. Oh, I think I said in a previous episode, there was an episode where he found the Crocs in the store, and I said, how did you know they'd be shopping right now? That wasn't a plot hole after all, because he's in cahoots with the guy who has the cameras all over town. I had to make sure Courtney's friend stayed out of my way, because if anyone saw through my disguise, it would be Cindy Berman. So I used Yolanda to push her away. In the way you don't let Dragon King's kid off the hook. Oh. It's very dead. And then I urged oh. Beth to cut off her parents to keep her distracted. <laughs> that was terrible advice. And Rick. <laughs> Rex Tyler's angry yeah, little boot. all this stuff. I mean, we all know what Rex went through before he set a limiter. Oh, I'd hate to be Rick right now. Whoa! This is such a good twist! Pat? Oh. P pat Pat, can you hear me, Pat? You're, you're still alive down there, right? Wow. That was crazy. That was such a good twist. Sylvester coming back to life was something that I had issues with and just seemed too good to be true. And I just, well, I mean, it seems too, too easy the way they brought him back to life. And now they just completely flipped that so that all plot holes are taken out and all um, too easiness is taken away. And they, that was so sneaky how he did all that. I didn't even realize how much he was sabotaging them. It, it, even though I was real, even though I could see the damage that was happening, I just couldn't even figure out that he was doing that on purpose. Oh. Welcome to a couple of reviews where we talk about romance, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna just combine this recording with another episode because there wasn't really any romance in this.
Now I want to rewatch every previous episode of this season to see how much sense it makes knowing what I know now. You know a plot twist is good when it makes you want to watch the whole season again. A uh, slight change of plans. I had recorded myself watching the final episode, but it wasn't exactly the best episode, in my opinion. There was a lot of things I took nitpicks with. That episode was not really a good episode, but it was still an acceptable place to end things with, because it still gave them their happy ending, is what I mean. And we're not going to be losing nights of sleep because cliffhangers aren't resolved. No, they, they're resolved cliffhangers. There's even a part where they jump ahead 10 years, or maybe it was more than 10 years, to show everything turned out great in the end. Pat dug himself out of the, the grave. Yolanda accidentally killed Lily, which that was, that was a highlight of the episode. And most importantly, Courtney and Cameron got together. There was a point where he turned against his father and he was going to just leave because he felt like he betrayed everyone. But then at the end, he comes back and he asks Courtney if she really thinks she can help him and they hug each other while the snow is falling. And there's this good detail I noticed where Courtney looks up at the snow while they're hugging. Like, even when he's so broken, she can still see the good in what he can do. Even after his his dad used those same powers to try to kill them, she still is able to see the beauty in his powers. Also, when they when they jumped ahead in time, there's there are things I wanted to nitpick, but you know. You know what? There, we're just gonna we're just gonna concentrate on the the positives since the show's earned it. But one kind of I don't know if this is really a complaint or not. I don't really know how to feel about it. In that flash forward, they mentioned that Rick and Beth got married, which was a surprise to me. Since when was that ever a thing? I don't recall them having moments that were were that were explicitly romantic, but okay. I didn't really think of them as romantic, which for me of all people to not think of them as romantic. Let's just talk about Courtney and Cameron as a whole, not just with that one episode. I do love how Cameron was put in this position where he's torn between his dad and Courtney, neither of which told him the truth as early as they should have. Yes, comes to grips with the fact that his dad did horrible things, but he's still claiming to do the right thing and claiming that he's had the best of intentions. And meanwhile, Courtney is really doing the right thing, but it keeps seeming like she's making things worse for him. I think that they lost some of their potential because of how slow they were going up until this point. It kind of reminds me of what happened with Spectacular Spider-Man, but not to the same degree. With Courtney and Cameron in Stargirl, they at least got together and we had a few episodes of them being together. So this was the better case scenario, but with Stargirl, they did get together, but they still lost some of their potential because of how slow they were going early on, and here's why. They never had Cameron join the main cast, or the, the Justice Society, they never had that happen. They could have had a lot of great material with Cameron joining the team after the team had been such a jerk to him, and them fighting back against this decision, and Cameron struggling to tolerate Rick most of all. And then Mike would have been freaked out all the time because he knows that Cameron's dad died because of him. Well, that's what they could have done if they had... I mean, the, we know that Cameron's dad actually wasn't dead now, but they could have had Cameron join the team before they knew that. So Ma Mike would have been freaking out all the time being around C Cameron. So what, I think what they should have done is had the stuff that happened in season three 
happened in season two. I think the stuff they did in season two where Courtney was not being there for Cameron for reasons she didn't tell him, that should have been done in season one. And then this stuff where she's trying to help him and the team is trying to keep them apart, that should have happened in season two. And then in season three, they could have dealt with Cameron being a part of the team with pushback and objections. So the moral of the story is if you're an aspiring television show writer, don't bank on having four seasons or more. The reason why Cameron and Courtney are so perfect for each other is Cameron is an artist who needs a muse, and Courtney is a hero who needs someone to save, and they both fit those roles so well. Courtney sort of saves Cameron from his own darkness, and helps him to not follow in his father's footsteps, and see his own potential, and not lose himself to his grief, and lose control of his powers. Courtney inspires Cameron to do better. And that's what superheroes do in real life. Superheroes inspire us to do better. Previously on The Romance in Stargirl. I'm Courtney. Cameron, I first saw your mother in Trafalgar Square in London. When I finally got up the courage to speak with her, she showed me page after page of the most amazing drawings she'd made. With me. That looks a lot like Courtney Whitmore to me. You found your muse. Every great artist has one. Back when I was doing the best work of my life, I did. Your art can say everything you can. Show her. I wanted to show you something. It's me. <laughs> yeah. The drawing weirded you out, didn't it? No, not at all. You can sketch me as many times as you want. <laughs> so many people have told me how much my dad has changed their lives, and an artist feels kind of selfish. Denying the world of your talent could seem selfish, too. You found your muse. It's me. I already made plans to hang out with Cindy Berman. Cindy Berman? Really? Yeah. Hopefully we can, uh, do something soon. Uh, sure. Now that surprise turned out way less fun than I thought. Uh, sorry about that. No, I, I'm sorry. I have to go. I'm so sorry. Time to tell you the truth. You've never been sorry about anything. Every time I try and paint now, it hurts. You did this to me, Courtney. I'm happy to listen. I said I'm fine, so leave me alone. When you really like someone, it's never easy. Like when I first asked your mother out. You had trouble asking mom out? Well, I had competition. There was another man pursuing her. So what did you do? I killed him. Every time I try and paint now, it hurts. I can't do it. It's time to admit that the artistic side of me is, is gone. It's not gone. You love art. Look, you, you've just been through so much. You express yourself so beautifully through color and paint. Can you do it through the ice? Think of all the love you have for your mom and dad and what they mean to you. Let your gift out feeling that. Figure this out together. I promise. Hi. Hi, back at you. How's it going, guys? Dude, we're in the middle of a conversation. So get lost. What exactly is your problem? I am staring right at him. I can knock it off. I'll see you later. Yeah. 
Don't tell me you're hanging out with that creep. He's not a creep. Do not say that. Great, but... He has a temper. Oh, and you don't? I finally found someone I like. Can't you just be happy for me? Not when it's him. I'm sorry, Courtney, but Cameron's dad... Cameron's not his dad any more than I'm mine, Yolanda. That's not fair to him. Or me. You see the good in people, and I see the bad. Cut bait, new girl. I've read the story, and it only ends one way. It's beautiful, don't you think? I do. I was talking about the ice hotel. No, no, so, so was I. <laughs> But this could be a perfect example of what you might be able to do. Maybe we can go there sometime. Or maybe I can bring it to you. You're good at that. When you really like someone, it's never easy. Like when I first asked your mother out. You had trouble asking mom out? Like competition. What exactly is your problem? I am staring right at him. So what did you do? I killed him. I did it. Liar! No! You're with him! You brought him here to kill me! No! Let her go! You turned her against me! Do you really think you can help me? So if you've seen all 11 parts of the romance in Stargirl, thank you so much for coming this whole way with me. You've been there through sicknesses and witch burnings. This has been such a fun ride. It's been such a fun show. And I cannot wait for Superman and Lois season three. Where I'm definitely going to do the same format that I've been doing with Stargirl with season three of Superman and Lois. So look forward to that. The only cloud in that silver lining is that uh, almost all of the shows on CW are either over or they've degraded into oblivion. And I've been hearing that the CW is going to be making cheaper shows going forward. So, as far as I'm concerned, Superman and Lois is the last CW show ever. But we'll enjoy it while it lasts, I guess. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and look forward to the romance in Superman and Lois.